This is the Acts Room of the Houses of Parliament, where the written documents of the laws that govern us and hopefully protect us are preserved. Some of the scrolls in this archive date back to 1497. However, by contrast, the legislation that protects women's rights is astonishingly recent. It was not until 1882 and the Married Women's Property Acts that all wives were entitled to hold money and property in their own name. It was not until 1928 that all women were entitled to vote. Until 1970 and the Equal Pay Act, it was perfectly legal to pay men more than women for the same work. Rape in marriage was not made a crime until 1991. Can you imagine a life in which all those civil rights were stripped away? But don't think that all women accepted their role as second-class citizens lying down. As early as the 17th century, an organised group dared to challenge the male monopoly on power. In 1649, Britain was turned upside down. Parliament seized power, Charles I was beheaded and Cromwell emerged as leader of the new republic. The same year, a party of women seized the moment to test the political imagination of the new government with a great march on Parliament. A poem of the day described them. Bonnie Besses in sea green dresses marching down Battalia to give the members of Westminster a second charge with the artillery of a petition. These women were levellers a radical political movement that argued the new Republic of England should be democratic. The introduction to their petition makes powerful reading. Since we are assured of our creation in the image of God, of an interest in Christ equal unto men, we cannot but wonder and grieve that we should appear so despicable in your eyes as to be thought unworthy to petition this honourable house. Have we not an equal interest with the men of this nation in those liberties and securities and other good laws of the land? So how was this petition received? One member of the Commons told the women they should stay at home and wash the dishes. A parliamentary official, the sergeant at arms, declared that the matter was too difficult for the women to understand. And anyway, the house had already given its answer to their husbands. But the women seemed to have stood their ground. When another MP sneered, it was strange that women should be petitioning parliament. The women countered, it was strange that you cut off the king's head, but I suppose you will justify it. Even though the leveller women were rudely dismissed and had to leave Westminster Hall with their demands unmet, their petition was a resounding challenge to the smug, patriarchal status quo. And they certainly had a point. The so-called mother of all parliaments was a fortress of men a bastion of male privilege. Women had no say in the laws by which they were governed. Not only were women excluded from playing any role in law-making, the common law itself was designed to keep women under the absolute control of their male relatives. All women were subject to the government of men, whether fathers, brothers or husbands. But worst off before the law were wives. As far as the common law was concerned, a married woman had no separate legal identity. Her husband could claim her lands and her earnings. Her children belonged to him. 
he could exercise rights of ownership over her body. He was even empowered to administer corporal punishment on his wife with any implement thinner than this, the notorious rule of thumb. The law empowered men to lord it literally over their wives. No wonder some women referred to wedlock as the dreadful noose.